Members of Parliament are getting ready to question CEOs of Canada's largest grocery store chains, the chains this week. And our next guest says food inflation has become incredibly, incredibly politicized and skepticism around grocers has only grown as a result, especially in the past year. We're joined by Sylvain Charlebois from the Agri-Food Analytic, Analytics Lab at Dalhousie University. Uh, Sylvain, uh, this, this has been something that people have been looking forward to, uh, hearing directly from these CEOs of these grocery store chains. Um, how significant do you think this is going to be? Well, uh, I think I think it is going to be political theater after all, but it was important for CEOs to show up. Uh, I mean, it's important. To, it is the House of Commons after all. I was actually there myself on December 5th testifying, and we were expecting CEOs to show up then. Uh, the committee was clearly disappointed, so I'm not surprised that they're actually – insisting that they show up so they will and i'm hopeful that the committee will take some time to actually listen to what they have to say because uh when i was there the, i mean the committee was very uh, clear in terms of politicizing the issue of food inflation unfortunately so listening is is key but asking the right questions you think is key either uh, uh, right yeah. too sylvain uh, what what sort of questions do you think these mps need to be focused in on to, to, to make this session worthwhile, I think I think the community needs to ask three or four key questions. One, food sales. How much profits are generated from food sales specifically? These companies are complicated. They're multifaceted. They sell cosmetics, pharmaceuticals. They sell clothing even. So I think Canadians would need to understand exactly how much profits. And if you look at Loblaws, uh, sales results last quarter, uh, sales went up 8.4% for food specifically, which is under food inflation. I think Canadians need to know that. Secondly, the blackout period between November and February. Uh, vendors are not allowed to increase prices. Now, prices go up in October violently and again in February. We saw that again. I would ask grocers how Canadians win with this blackout practice we've seen so for, for, for so many years. And, and, the, and the third question would be about the grocer code of conduct. It's in the works right now, and the whole idea of the grocer code of conduct is to discipline the supply chain, protect processing and independent grocers, essentially, lessen the power that companies like Loblaws and Walmart have right now. They're, it's an oligopoly. So I would certainly ask CEOs, do they endorse this particular code? Let's go through each of those, Sylvain. Uh, but but starting with the sales aspect, like you, you said, eight percent or just over eight percent sales food uh, for food at Loblaw. Yeah. But are you talking about overall revenue? Are you talking about margins? Because I mean, that's that's what this really comes down to is, is some transparency potentially about how much prices are are going up versus how much you know sales they're they're actually making in total. Oh, absolutely. It's a, it's a really good question. I mean, I, I think numbers are being thrown uh, all around without understanding them. Uh, the 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 8.4% is is sales growth for food specifically. And uh, but what does that mean really? Uh, what uh, what's behind the 8.4%? The other thing, Jacqueline, that, uh, that I think your listeners need to know is that operational margins in Canada for grocers are double of what they are in the US. So margins have remained stable. We don't believe there's any profiteering going on, but margins are pretty darn high in Canada compared to the US, and it boils down to one thing, competitiveness. Hmm. Uh, I don't think that the game market is all that competitive, and frankly, I don't think the game market is all that attractive for external investors like Lidl, like Aldi. They've been in the US for a long time, They've been thinking about Canada, but now looking at Nordstrom exiting Target a few years ago, Sears a few years ago, you wonder how do you make money in Canada with interprovincial barriers, labor laws we have, and taxes? It's a tough market to make money in. It, that's what you think is is holding um, that competition back, or having more uh, retailers, grocers in the market competing, or some of those uh, those those rules and those uh, that sort of red tape. I, I absolutely. If if the committee wants to do its job, 
I think the number one question they have to ask ourselves, how do we make Canada a more competitive market in food distribution? Because right now it's been tough. I mean, Walmart was successful. When they bought Wilco in 1994, they adopted an incremental approach. They went slow. Same for Costco. They opened up a few stores. They learned about Canada. And over time, now they're dominating quite a bit. Target actually went in, all in, and they paid the price. That's really – and Lowe's was the same thing, by the way. And so mm. you, you can see that really Canada is not – it's it's vast. It's big. You got you – don't, you, don't you don't have one Canada. You have several markets, several provinces with different sets of rules. And that's why it's been difficult for, for companies to do business, especially food companies. So, I mean, when it comes to those questions, if you're talking about the competition side of things, how do you, you know, uh, create more competition in this market? Is it really the CEOs of the grocers that uh, those MPs should be speaking with? Well, that's I'm going back to my first comment about political theater. <laughs> uh, I don't think that Galen Weston, Michael Medline, and Eric Laflèche would have an answer to that question. But I, I, like I said, I think the committee's job is to figure out how to make this place more competitive. So far for main grocers, it's been cozy. What happened in 2014 when Target announced it was coming into Canada? Food prices dropped for six months. Why? Hmm. Because grocers wanted to retain market share. You need a disruptor to make things a little bit more interesting. It, it, it is interesting, This uh, the focus that, that there has been on this concept or idea of greedflation, and, and you've looked into that, Sylvain, you mentioned it briefly, but you know you don't see the evidence for that happening. You, you laid out how uh, margins have been steady, even if they are higher than in the U.S., um, but is it just yeah. that we don't have enough transparency around the data to, to really have a sense of, of whether it is uh, going on or not? I think I think transparency is is the issue here. Uh, I think a lot. Well, first of all, people need to look at balance sheets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they need to bother to look at them, and if they do, we need more information for sure. But but Jacqueline, to be honest, the, the, I think the one reason why grocers are showing up tomorrow in Ottawa, mm -hmm. it's because of what's going on with the Competition Bureau. There's a study there. They're studying the food industry, and we know that they'll be submitting a report in June. My guess is that there'll be some changes to the Competition Act, changes that probably grocers won't like. It has a lot to do with transparency. Uh, that seems like you know something. <laughs> Do you know something just, along I'm those just, lines, I'm or it's just, just a guess? I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. <laughs> but because in December they should have shown up, they didn't, and now they're showing up. Right. I think some people are talking to them. Interesting.